um, you know, they're watching us, you know, and, and they can feel that, you know, the tension in the home. And so really it's also, you know, making sure that you're taking care of yourself and that you are really listening to, to the messages that are out there too, but not overdoing it. Okay, so today on Someone You Should Meet, I'm joined by John Laidlaw. John, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. No problem at all. And so you are a licensed marriage and family therapist, and you're also the clinical director of North County Lifeline. Is that right? Have I got that correct? That's correct. Absolutely. Okay, so a busy man right now. It has been a bit, uh, bit strange and a bit busy, absolutely. Okay, well, I've got loads I want to chat with you about today. But first of all, um, let me speak to you in your capacity as a marriage and family therapist, because for many of us, we're all at home, 24-7 together, you know, partners, spouses, kids, etc. Um, first of all, let's have a chat about the relationship between a partner or a spouse right now. And frankly, what advice do you give to everyone to survive this time? Well, it's the ultimate relationship challenge, <laughs> um, spending every moment together. Um, you know, there's, there's, you know, it's, it's a, it's a sort of unprecedented uh, time. Um, I mean, you'd have to go back quite a while, um, you know, to, to get uh, into another situation like this. And, um, you know, a lot of the things that, we, as, you know, in relationships, um, you know, need to do sort of day in and day out are the same as we would need to do uh, today, except for I think it's just even more important, you know, to be doing, you know, those different things. And, and that is really to, you know, show appreciation uh, for your spouse, you know, make sure that if you do have a little bit of a, 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 um, a conflict or some, something that you want to talk with them about, uh, make sure that you bring it up gently and that you're using I statements versus, you know, saying I, you're making me feel this way. You say something along the lines of, you know, I'm feeling pretty stressed right now um, and I kind of need a little bit of alone time. Kind of just, you know, take it off of them and, and put it, um, put the, just explain to them what your needs are. So it's a lot of the same things uh, that we, you know, teach. Um, and speak to in, in marriage and family counseling, but it's just bringing it to our forefront of our minds right now. Okay, um, you mentioned, you know, starting with the I statements and saying, for example, you know, I need some time on my own right now. But like, how <laughs> practical is that? Because like, we are all quarantined in the same house. So how do you like practically go about doing that? Well, I mean, it's, it's different for everybody. Some people have more space, some people have less space. Um, you know, it, taking time for yourself, um, you know, it, it's, it's being really thoughtful about what it is that, that, you, that you're needing to do. I mean, it could be sitting in the car by yourself for, you know, 15 or 20 minutes, put your seat back and, and do some progressive relaxation stuff that you look up on YouTube or, or things like that. Uh, it can be doing a little bit of gardening by yourself. Uh, really, it can just be sitting on the couch and watching a TV show next to somebody else, but just knowing that we're not, you know, speaking to those around you like I just want to you know, sit back and watch the show right now. And um, let's talk about relationships between children now, because, you know, my girls generally 80 percent of the time get on really well. But again, yeah. they're in an environment where they can't get away from each other. So you know, how as parents are we supposed to um, establish like a healthy relationship between siblings that doesn't end up in them literally wanting to kill each other every five minutes? Well, I, I think first we uh, need to understand developmentally that they're children and that's going to happen. You know, and this time uh, with COVID-19 is just really um, elevating those type of things. We are... Um, spending a lot of time together. So first, you know, really understand that, you know, that's a normal part uh, of, of, you know, sibling behavior. And then the other thing is, is in making sure that their days are structured well enough that they do have boundaries around them and that they, they can understand uh, that they, they, have, they have things that they need to do together and they have things that they are responsible for themselves, that they're not just at each other the whole time. 
Okay, it, that's interesting because um, one of my previous guests um, in the last couple of weeks also mentioned the need for structure. She's actually a principal at one of the local schools, my girls' yeah. school. Um, and she said it's important to try and you know, create structure because kids thrive um, in structured environments. Okay, what about the anxiety issue right now? Because particularly involving kids. So as a parent, and I'm a journalist, I'm very well aware of what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis regarding COVID-19. I want to inform my children, but I don't want to frighten them and, and stress them. And, you know, so how do we go about um, you know, protecting our children, um, but in the same way, you know, we're informing them so they do know what's going on around them? Yeah, for number one, know your audience, you know. The, you know, if you have, you know, three different children and, you know, one's a, you know, a very young child and, you know, one's a preteen and one's an adolescent, you know, those are three different conversations that you're going to have. Um, if you're talking about, you know, very young children, you want to just keep it simple. Keep it simple and clear uh, that, that, you know, that there is a, you know, that there's a cold that people are getting um, and that we want to make sure that we're keeping our distance from people because we don't want to um, to spread you know the germs and so we just have to follow some simple rules and that is that we're going to stay home we're going to um, and we're going to make sure that we wash our hands a lot and um, and mom and dad are responsible uh, just to make sure that, that you're safe so very just clear straightforward messages okay so keeping um, it nice and basic and and to the point um talk to me about anxiety and how does that play out in children and how does that play out in adults particularly right now sure so you know children a lot of times are, they're they're picking up their cues from their parents as well and so without meaning to stress anybody out um you know they're watching us you know and, and they can feel the you know the tension in the home and so really it's also you know making sure that you're taking care of yourself and that you are really listening to, to the messages that are out there too, but not overdoing it. The news, unfortunately, tends to uh, repeat things kind of over and over again. And so especially with children, we don't want to have that on the TV all the time because they can see that as a novel and new thing that's happening all the time. And so for us, just keeping the same sort of simple message that we're telling our younger children, we tell ourselves, which is, you know, this is, uh, can be a very stressful time, but ultimately, we, you know, the things that we control are the taking care of ourselves, washing our hands, making sure that we're getting good sleep, uh, making sure that we're getting some exercise, making sure that we're connected to, to those individuals uh, that support us, um, and, and things along those lines, and so that we're giving ourselves clear messaging. Okay, you mentioned the news and obviously the news isn't great right now um but how do we go about maintaining a good mental health and limiting news would that be a suggestion as well to you or limiting maybe social media because some of that's very negative right now too absolutely um you know the the, the covid19 is is moving but it, you know it's also moving in a way that we have a lot of information and information is, is very important uh, to, to really keeping us calm and knowing what's going on. And that goes well for children as well. And so, but at the same time, repeating the same information or information that doesn't really pertain to us um, since we're in San Diego versus another place, um, just making sure that we have the information, maybe spend you know 10 minutes, 15 minutes, um, you know, looking at the news, um, making sure that we go to the CDC website or in San Diego, going to the San Diego um, County Public Health um, uh, information site. But that's about, you know, I think all we need during the day and definitely social media. Um, you know, you're going to want to watch that uh, as well, really anytime uh, that, you know, COVID-19 or not, you know, social media does tend to increase our stress levels. Tell you what I've noticed a lot on social media, particularly amongst kind of like my mum friends, um, they're feeling really under pressure right now because, you know, they're looking through Facebook or Instagram and there's like an abundance of photos of like perfect mums having the perfect day with their perfect kids and homeschooling looks so easy. You know, they've baked a massive cake, they've done all this academic work. 
And then, you know, you really haven't done any of that. Your kids have been at each other all day and you're kind of, you know, ready to open a, a bottle of wine. So, you know, how, how much does, um, you know, social media um, add extra pressure to people right now? Well, I think it, it you know, it, it adds a tremendous amount of pressure. But um, as far as I can tell, and, and talking with a lot of people, I, I have not seen anybody that that's handling it that well. Um, you know, my wife is a licensed marriage and family therapist. I'm a, a marriage and family therapist. My mom's a, a, a psychologist. And, and really, you know, we're, you know, we're just trying to, you know, get through the day. And, you know, and, and so really take it easy on yourself. You're not a credentialed teacher. Um, you're not used to these circumstances. You know, you're in, especially these days with so many activities that are normally going on, uh, you know, that we're, you know, that we're running all over the place. Now, all of a sudden, we're, we're pretty stationary. I mean, it's totally understandable, you know, that you just need to um, give yourself a break, watch some TV. You know, you know, get, you know, make sure that you're, we're doing enough to keep uh, a little bit of a schedule and try to work on it maybe a little bit more each day. But these are novel times and we need to give ourselves a tremendous amount of, uh, of latitude. Well, I feel better now that I know that you also have meltdowns in your families. I don't feel quite as much of a failure. So that's great. Um, who have you found um, most affected by this emotionally and mentally? Which you know, sectors of society? Well, we're seeing right now a lot of, of individuals that, that are struggling with um, alcohol and drug abuse um, that are finding this time particularly difficult. Um, and also, you know, isolation really does um, have some negative effects on people. And so those that have had pre-existing uh, mental health conditions, um, uh, those that were dealing with um, significant anxiety and depression beforehand, uh, those are the type of individuals that we're, we're seeing having a little bit um, harder of a time and, and needing more support. Um, how much more vulnerable are elderly people, for example, who may not necessarily um, be comfortable with technology and so they're finding themselves isolated, unable to see family or friends, um, and maybe not even being able to video call with them. For example, my granddad's, you know, 95. He would never work out how to use um, a video call. I'm sure there are lots of 95 year olds who are very tech savvy, but that isn't my granddad. So right now he isn't seeing anyone. And um, I mean, what can we do to help um, you know, the mental health um, of people in that situation, for example? Well, Claire, I think you're, you know, you're exactly right. You know, with, you know, with, with folks that are a little bit older, the, you know, the, the technology uh, aspect of things is something that they may just not feel comfortable doing. You know, and and we're all used to, you know, paying our bills online and, and doing things like that. Whereas a lot of individuals, um, you know, they're, they're still um, driving down to the post office, you know, and, 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 and mailing in their bills. It also gives them that um, sense of structure in their days. And so absolutely, those that are a bit older um, are, are more at risk because they're more isolated and they don't... Um, Typically, I mean, you know, it's not true for everybody, but um, they're not quite as uh, comfortable with technology. So things like, you know, just making sure that you're calling on the telephone and checking in with them, making sure that you're asking them questions about um, things that they have mastery on so that they can feel like they're giving, you know, something to you as well. Call them up for, a, a, you know, help with a recipe or call them up and tell them to, you know, tell me about that story when I was, you know, this you know, uh, when I was 12 again and have your kids around so that they can hear the story, um, you know, try to get help them with the, the technology if possible. Um, but but really try to involve them uh, in, in your daily routine. Um, and, and that will be that will go very far with them. I like the idea of getting, you know, like my kids or your kids involved in conversations with their great grandparents or whatever. That, that's a great idea. And um, just tell me a little bit about the North County Lifeline Agency that you are the clinical director of. What do you do and which people do you help support? Absolutely. Uh, so North County Lifeline uh, has been around for you know, about 45 years and we have a mighty mission 
uh, to build self-reliance among youth and adults uh, and, and individuals through high quality community-based services. And we have an array of different services. Um, we have youth development, behavioral health, human trafficking and prevention, child abuse prevention uh, and domestic violence prevention, uh, and also um, self-sufficiency and specialty housing programs. So it's a wide breadth of, of programs that, that helps the most vulnerable populations. And we have offices in, all across North County and now in San Diego. Uh, we have offices in uh, Oceanside, uh, in Vista, um, and in San Marcos. Wow. So you mentioned some really vulnerable members of our society right there, you know, child sex trafficking victims, domestic abuse victims, to name but a few. Um, how is this current climate impacting on people like that? For example, you know, a domestic abuse victim who may be now trapped living 24-7 with their abuser. No, oh, absolutely. It, you know, it's a difficult time. And when, especially when you add socioeconomic conditions into it, um, and, and, and histories of trauma as well, um, there is a recipe for, um, for some difficult times. And, and, you know, and we found that, you know, child welfare calls uh, have, have decreased because we're, you know, kids are not at school. Um, there's not as many people, you know, around to see what's going on. So North County Lifeline um, just stood up and launched our telehealth platform uh, um, in response to COVID-19. I mean, that makes us have the ability to be sort of seeing what's going on a little bit more um, and, you know, and really, you know, getting in, uh, getting kind of back to as normal as possible uh, delivery of services. You know, and for instance, when we're, we're talking um, with an individual with domestic violence, we'll have uh, at the beginning of our telehealth se uh, session, we'll make sure that there's nobody else uh, in the room or around and we'll set up. Uh, code words and things like that, so that we can uh, we can know if there's something going on that that uh, around their physical safety or emotional safety during the sessions. How does that work with children, though? Children who may not be in a position to, you know, call you. They may be, you know, very young themselves. Like, what happens to them right now? Yes. Well, so we, you know, we do have uh, our school-based mental health programs. Um, and, you know, they are operating. And so, you know, we um, have, we do telehealth with them and we also do video, uh, two-way video, just like this, um, uh, meetings with them. And so what we're finding is, you know, in, in some ways, um, more availability to do, uh, to do sessions um, with the children. Um, and so, and doing family therapy. It, it, we're, we're training our whole um, staff on on how to provide what we're experts at on in a new in a new way. Okay, and um, talk to you about addicts. Okay, how can we support you know a family friend or um, you know a family member who may have an addiction problem and you know they potentially are really feeling it right now? How can we help them? Well, really reach out to them and, and, it's, and speak to them about what's going on in their lives. Speak to them about the goals that they, um, they, they've communicated to us. Um, make sure that they feel a presence, that they're not just isolated in their home by themselves. Um, you know, spend time with them talking about, you know, what is going on with them and let them have an avenue to, you know, to discuss things and really connect them you know, to help. There is a lot of health out, help out there right now. Um, telehealth, you know, it, across um, San Diego County is, um, it, it has been launched in a very significant way. Uh, I'm also on the board of San Diego County's Mental Health Contractors Association. And across all of, of San Diego, I know our partner agencies are, are providing these services. Um, and, um, all you would have to do is call 211 um, and you uh, just address whatever it is. If that's a self sufficiency need because you've been laid off, if that's a mental health need, if that's a substance abuse need, they're trained and, and will walk you through um, and connect you into a program that can help with you. 
So what are you seeing the most calls in relation to right now? You know, which problems are really surfacing with regards to the people that are contacting your organization? We're seeing a lot of, of need with um, depression. We're seeing a lot of need um, uh, for substance abuse treatment. We're seeing, you know, a significant need um, from, from those individuals that are also um, having difficulty paying their rent. Our same clients now have more needs. Um, they need to be able to pay their SDG and E bill. They need to be able to um, buy food for their family. And so this is adding on. Um, to an already uh, large list of needs that they had. How long term do you think this could be? You know, even if this virus is gotten under control in the next couple of months, what will be the long term uh, mental and emotional impact on many people, do you think? Claire, that's a really, really good question and one that we're, we're really diving into right now. Um, as there's a lot of medical things going on right now, some of the behavioral and mental health needs and substance abuse needs are, are not being as addressed as, as, as often as we would like them to. And so, you know, even, and I, and I don't, you know, I don't have a timeline. I check the CDC, you know, websites and things like that. But I think, you know, we've got a significant amount of time left. Uh, but when, when we do move out of the medical phase of this, I think it will be months and you, maybe, you know, a significant period of time, six months, a year before we get to dealing with the mental health um, and social service needs uh, of those individuals. Okay, and John, finally, let's end on a positive here. How can we make this situation a positive? You know, maybe it can change the way we think, change the way we react with each other. You know, how can we make this not just a doom and gloom situation and come out of this stronger? Absolutely. I mean, it, you know, it was in our first few days of, of, uh, of being uh, isolating ourselves from everybody else and, and, uh, and us sort of sitting down as a family saying, okay, what are some things that we want to do? We've always said we wanted to do, but, um, you know, we, we haven't been able to because of sports or because of, you know, dance and all the other things that, that take up the time after the school day. You know, things that we should have been doing all along, but, you know, now we've actually got some time to do. And so, you know, it's a simple thing. I think a lot of families are doing it, but going for an evening walk together, you know, is something that, and it took us a little bit of time to get used to it because at the beginning we were kind of like a, a little group of, of um, like wolverines around each other. We didn't know exactly what to do. We loved each other. We wanted to be together, but we were kind of growling at each other. And so we realized we had to do something. Um, and so we started walking and, and at the beginning of our walk, uh, you know, it, it took maybe about 15 or 20 minutes, but all of a sudden, all of that started to calm down. You know, and the kids would start, you know, running around a little bit. And, um, and we found that to be, you know, a, a tremendously um, useful time, you know, for the family. But there's all sorts of things, you know, that, um, that we can do during this time. If it's little projects around the house, really understand that this is a time that, you know, that we'll look back on our whole lives. And, and that we were the pause button on our society got hit and and it's jarring for us. But if we look at it as an opportunity uh, that we really get to spend some incredibly quality time with those loved ones around us um, and just take a deep breath, make sure, know that you're not a credentialed teacher, know that, you know, this time will pass. And, and really there's a lot of, of, uh, wonderful things that we can we can do to just take off you know take our foot off the accelerator and, and just sit back and just breathe okay uh, well john thank you so much it's been a pleasure speaking with you today and someone you should meet um you've certainly given me lots of advice so all the best keep up the good work and um, i'd love to touch base with you at some time in the future well, Claire, thank you so much. It was wonderful, and I love your program, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, John. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you. Bye.